feeling stuck inside, needing to rock? Feed your soul at the air drum party. You know you're an air drummer. Come out of the closet. I did. Because I find myself sitting there and air drumming along with all my favorite records. <laughs> totally relates to the air drumming thing. I would make these wonderful drum sets out of magazines and then beat the covers up. Right now, Adventures of Power, the cult movie about air drumming is teaming up to raise money for musicians in need and to rock your pants off. Music is not about having arms. Music is about having spirit. With a free online watch party where you can chat with the cast, comedians, and celebrity drummers. Who knows who might stop by? Save the world. Feel the rock. Be the power. Come to airdrummer.com. We want to see you. Rock. You can do it. Do it. Do it! Come on! Do it now! Hello, everybody. My name is Ari Gold, the director of Adventures of Power, the air drum movie. I'm also in the Guinness Book of World Records for air drumming. But more importantly, I am here to introduce the most amazing trio of wannabe air musicians who actually play real instruments of all time. Um, Charlie Benante from Anthrax and many other things. One of the geniuses of Thrash and more. Um, hi, Charlie. Um, Alex, hi, Ari. Uh, guitarist of many different genres from uh, metal to jazz, um, uh, who has the distinction of turning me on to metal when I was 13, when, he was, when his band was called Legacy. And Rod Diaz, bassist extraordinaire of suicidal tendencies, um, I feel like this is America coming together. We have NorCal <laughs> metal, Southern California thrash punk metal, and New York thrash metal finally together. And so America is America is going to be whole again thanks to this trio. So thank you all for being here for this. Uh, thank you. Thank good you. To be here. Yes, Ari Gold in the house. So. Um, you know, we're going to be getting questions from the audience, and um, but uh, I, I would love to know how the three of you met because it's such an amazing pairing. Um, we also, you know, with the movie having Neil Peart in it, I'm in a Rush connection, and you guys playing Rush together uh, as a trio. Um, how did this happen? How did you guys come together and meet and and uh, make rock together? Wow. wow. Well, I, I, I mean, I've known Alex since uh, the 80s. Um, Too long. Yeah. A long, long, long time. Uh, yeah. Our first, one of our first tours in Europe, uh, Testament were uh, accompanying us on that tour. But did we meet before that in San Francisco or somewhere? Or was that the first time on that tour? Yeah, we, there? Testament's first show outside of the Bay Area was uh, supporting Anthrax. And it was like in southern like outside of la not la proper and was it like we corona? ended up on <laughs> corona exactly metal, metal exactly. wasn't allowed metal wasn't allowed into the center of cities back then right at, the, at that time that's at kind that, of true that metal had to yeah. be just outside the center of the city yeah not, but not we, yeah i started with that show yeah and we, we ended up on uh megaforce and they they had a big connection with megaforce right johnny z uh, was this? Yeah, yeah. Figure. He was our manager, and then he had a he, he was had their a label manager, also. and and he was our label guy. So yeah, we, we ended up yeah. So we ended up doing two tour dates together, and then and, um, yeah, that was that was how we first met. But we never played together until quite recently. Well, Legacy played with us. They they uh, were supporting a show in San Francisco one time. Before they before they were testament, um, and I don't know if you were there though, Alex. At that time, this was like eighty five, maybe eighty six. Yeah, or... I might not have been there. Uh, I came right around that time. Yeah, they, they I think were so. already a band before. I was. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Yeah. So they. Um. So we've known each other since that that time, and then uh, Ra, Ra was like what well, this big at that time. So he was, <laughs> was <laughs> you guys rubbed him, rubbed his like, bass flash along the yeah. bass strings, and that's how he got so tough, right? That's what I heard. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, Ra, but the first Ra, time we we met Ra on the on the cruise. That's the first yeah, time I met. Yeah, and 
and before that there there's been like you know like random festivals that like our bands have played at this uh, the same festival but we i don't know if we did i don't remember like actually like meeting or i remember watching you guys play but i don't yeah. really remember like meeting you guys there so i think i, I would say it was probably the cruise that we all did together and that was like the first time that i guess we all like interacted with each other i guess uh, yeah exactly and and the rest is history <laughs> but, so did you guys talk about doing rush like playing rush songs to, like quickly or how did that develop i don't think um, that happened <laughs> the first I, first honestly the first i heard about it was during the shutdown <laughs> when we were all yeah. at home and there were quarantine yeah. videos were not a thing yet Right. right. We can give ourselves credit for being you, like you did the most. You you invented a technology that allowed for like actually live <laughs> playing. Well, I re I do remember that at some point, like very very early in like the whole quarantine thing, uh, me and Charlie did one. Like I think yeah. it was like kind of like like on your birthday or something like that. You sent me like a like just it wasn't a song or anything. You sent me like a beat. Yeah, and I just like improvise something, and then I at some point you asked me, it's like, hey, we should like get a guitar, or whatever. And, and but I exactly. think it was you that came up with the rush thing. What what happened was too, uh, just to uh, take it from where Ra was uh, talking about. Um, I was watching the news twenty four seven, and I was getting depressed day by day day by day and then uh my girlfriend said to me you got to stop watching this stuff because you're <laughs> you're just so bummed out and depressed go go be creative go do something and um i think it was around that time where i talked to ra and alex and i said we should do a jam we should do like a quarantine jam because it reminded me of like when i was younger i would come home from school and i'd go to my room and just play and it just kind of had that same vibe and I think the the Neil the, the death of Neil was still on my mind, and that's I, that's why I think we chose to do a Rush song. And plus, we all love Rush so much. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. that's how it started. It had just yeah. evolved from there, and these guys could take it from there. I mean, yeah, it, it was I, a short time after Neil's loss. Make, yeah. Making a trio is because of Rush. I mean, I, I made the movie because of Rush. They've they've obviously been a massive massive influence across. I mean, so many people um, have been touched by that music and they, sp they spoke to something that took a while for people to, I, I think there was a kind of resistant, a cultural resistance <laughs> for a long time in terms of, oh, it's not cool or something. And obviously it is cool, but um, I have some questions that I'm seeing. Um, uh, someone's asking this one, Alex, do you have the mad ball guitar straps bill? That's from David Couch. No, it uh, kind of disintegrated. Okay, those, those Mad Balls. You know, I had I had it in in storage. Mad Balls for those who weren't around. Oh, yeah, Iran has a Mad Balls. I don't know if that's there the same go. Mad Ball. Oh uh, well, yeah, that's what it they migrated. Look like. It migrated. Yeah. And are you still playing yeah. uh, Buddha amps or Kemper? But, uh -huh. Yeah, no, they were these great little toys. They were like little Nerf balls with faces. And I had them on the guitar strap. And um, unfortunately, you know, it sat in storage for many years. And one day I go through my storage. And go, oh, here's the Mad Balls. And they were, they just completely disintegrated. I don't know what happened. Maybe they were all like, the they sweat. Were, they were foam rubber, uh, yeah. basically. And I, yeah. And I think over the year, you know, I, I did a couple tours, a couple years of touring and all the sweat and I guess the, there was some yeah. chemical reaction, so they, it just <laughs> completely <laughs> Tox it happens to all of us. no more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you guys see the possibility of the three of you going on tour together when when uh, things change? When we are, I all... would love that. Uh, I want to. I'm up for uh, it. I'm up for it too. I want uh, my manager to, to talk to the Riot Fest people here in Chicago and and have us do. A whole set yeah. of rush. <laughs> well, oh, you have, such a good idea. So this yeah. is, here's an idea from the fans: the three, the three Testament, Anthrax, and Suicide all together, and the three of you as your own act. So it's four acts. You guys are the maybe you're the headline. 
All right, that'd be great. We but we need Brandon too. Brandon from yeah. uh, Cro so Crobot. We need Crobot. Is, Crobot's yeah, got to be on so the Crobot, board. Okay. Crobot okay. has to be there yeah. too. But the, how does that does that mess with the trio the trio vibe? Nah, it's okay. I think it's. I mean, right, you guys are you guys are all good with him. He comes in on the vocal songs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll we'll start off with instrumentals like bam bam bam, and then Brandon will come in. Uh -huh. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna sing. <laughs> I'll just tell you. Yeah, none of us are gonna. I'm not gonna sing. sing. <laughs> Nobody has has a Getty voice. I, I, no. Ron, I, I know this is before your time was suicidal, but I did get a report from my sister last night, and I I mentioned this to you that my <laughs> her skinhead boyfriend went to a suicidal show in San Francisco in the '80s when you were a, a small child, um, and he had this shit kicked out of him by suicidal because he was a white power skinhead, and I want to say that. That your bandmates did good. <laughs> I approve that. <laughs> she was. I, but I mean, you said it was like eighty-five, right? Uh, it could have been as it could have been as late as eighty-nine. That would be the oh, the, okay. the the tail end. I I don't know what year it was, but I do know that he ended up completely completely blooded. But but not yeah, by, I mean, not, I'm, not I'm by sure the audience happened. by the band. I'm I'm sure that it has <laughs> happened probably more than once Clarity. in those, yeah. you know, in that era. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, okay. Uh, there's a lot of people saying how much they love the Rush covers during the lockdowns, and they really, really meant a lot. You guys have such a cool Christopher Muller ke chemistry together, even remotely. Would you consider writing original material together? Me oh, I personally, would I would love that. I'm I'm down for yeah. anything. So. Yeah. Yeah, Charlie, yeah we're, we're, we're up for anything, I think. I are, would are love you, to do that. Do you guys switch instruments ever? Where, you know, like get Alex on the drums and Charlie on the guitar and, and raw, like singing opera? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Charlie could too do any instrument. I would, you wouldn't put me on Yeah, drums. Charlie maybe plays I, everything. I, yeah, I could maybe I do some little keyboards, but no. I can Charlie play some could drums. Do, come on, do some, foot, some foot keyboards so you can get the, the Getty, Getty yeah. thing playing. Yeah. Actually, yeah, we could get the Taurus pedals and we could do that. But, you know, the thing about singing, especially singing a Rush song, man, that takes confidence <laughs> because... Yeah. Uh, Keyboard, keyboards, bass, and singing. Getty is, and it's not, it's, uh, it's not just that. Oh, yeah. it's, it's singing the way Getty sings and playing the way <laughs> that he plays. You know, it's not like... He's not just writing a note and singing. He's doing crazy stuff and singing yeah, He is like stuff. multiple yeah. people, Getty. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he is. And his hair, he has two hairs, one on either side. Yeah, so look, I, I, I'm done. I, <laughs> yeah. uh, I, 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 you know, the, the thing about Getty, too, is um, I don't know if it was because he had to do it. They didn't want to get another member, but he had to do it that way. Same with Alex. Alex plays Taurus pedals, too, during some songs. Uh, but you know, just seeing those two come together with the double neck, like when they do Xanadu and stuff, it's just like, man, three guys creating all that stuff. Yeah. And, you know, mm. it's, uh, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, Alex, you covered Tommy Bolton. Big influence on you? Someone's asking. Tommy Bolin. Bolin, 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 sorry. I misread it. Yeah, Tom, Tommy Bolin was the uh, late, he's the late great guitarist. He was in Deep Purple oh. for a time with Glenn Hughes. And he was in um, a band with Billy Cobham, great, great drummer. Yeah. So Billy Cobham's mm -hmm. album. And a from uh, Mahavishnu Spectrum. Orchestra. Yeah, and he, he was most known for Mahavishnu. But when he did his own thing, it was his first, I believe it was his first solo record. It was called Spectrum. And it's like a landmark jazz rock album. And Tommy Bolin is, is the guitarist. Mm -hmm. So the most well-known song from that album is a song called Chameleon. And I recently did a jam along with that on my Instagram live and just shared that online. Mm -hmm. Nice. A lot of, yeah, a lot of folks don't know that song. It's surprising. I mean, those of us who are fans of that genre and especially, you know, musicians who, you know, grew up you know, jamming on to that are familiar with it. But it seems like uh, it was reaching a lot of people that weren't familiar with it, which is really cool. 
and more people should know about Tommy Bolin too. Because yeah, oh, absolutely, really appreciate yeah. the artist. A couple of months ago, I went down the rabbit hole for trios. I was trying to find like the best trios, and of course, I went on a ELP kick, you know, for a while um, because they're so cool. they're like that whole prog rocky thing, you know. Um, Carnival Rush. Nine. Oh, dude, it's so yeah. awesome. <laughs> Carl Palmer, Keith yeah. Emerson, and then yeah. the the it's it, the thing about a trio is like. You have to know, and you like I said before, you have to have confidence to just be three. You know, yeah. you got like Blue Cheer, you know, Motorhead, um, Cream, of course, Cream, Cream Jimi Hendrix Experience. I mean, you know, there's like the, the history Hendrix. of like, you know, just the police. What else? The police. police yeah. yeah, police. Yeah, absolutely. So, it's the trios has always been a, Stuart, a, a very. Stuart Copeland just did an thing. air drum video with Modern Drummer. Just posted my air drum video with Neil <laughs> Peart, and the, a few hours later, Stuart Copeland posted an air drum video. I don't know if it's a coincidence, <laughs> but it was right after Modern Drummer posted me and Neil. I think Stuart wants in on the action. I want to get him. What's on. what song yeah, was on. he air drumming? He actually didn't even put on music. He had a couple like Christmas toys or or like little dolls, and he was like, "Here's." Here's for the air drummers or something like that. And then he like shook the toys like this. So as far as air drumming goes, to me, it's like, I've always thought of Tom Sawyer being one of those songs that yeah. created created yeah. air drums. That's the I, climax of my movie is Tom Sawyer. I know. That whole <laughs> Phil, I would have to say like, you know, the Phil Collins in the air tonight. I'd have in the to air, say, the movie too. <laughs> uh, Which Jack had a resurgence Diane. recently. Oh, Jack, Jack and, and Diane. Diane. Produced oh, wow. by at, trivia people. Do you know who created that sound for that song, Jack and Diane? Anyone? <laughs> Anyone? Anyone hints? David Bowie. He created the David Bowie sound. So yeah. that was Kenny Aronoff playing that. Kenny Aronoff played it, uh, but right. um, uh, I'll, I'll Brian Eno. No, uh, it's 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 like my my brain is it's our, it's our, the it's, great the greatest guitar one of the greatest guitars of the seventies and my brain is like melting. Oh, oh uh, Mick Ronson. Mick Ronson, yes, thank you. Mick Ronson yeah. produced Jack and Diane. He was the one who came in and said, "Let's That's have this right. big, crazy drum fill here and this big guitar thing." And John Mellencamp has you know credits Ronson for creating his like mega stardom. Yeah, there's I, a great I, I, uh, documentary on Mick Ronson. <clears throat> Yeah, recently. That's how I found out. I didn't even know that. Yeah, I didn't know that either. I mean, I thought um, the Peter Gabriel, Peter Gabriel record that Phil Collins played on. Uh, Influence. Peter, didn't, yeah. Peter yeah. didn't want any symbols, no symbols mm -hmm. on it. So I think that uh, helped to achieve that drum sound that they got. You know, the gated reverb and everything. You know, Is that Murata uh, played in that or. I don't know if that's you, you, Padgham, did that record. But I mean, who played on, uh, talking about like Security or Peter Gabriel 3? Uh, Phil Collins plays on. Oh, he played uh, on it. That's right. That's yeah. right. He was in the studio and they were like, no symbols. And then he imitated. No symbols, right. He, like what, what he learned from Peter, he imitated on. on exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, you're allowed to influence each other. They were in a band together, so. <laughs> you know the funny thing about those two guys is like okay so peter gabriel has this distinctive voice it's it's so when you hear it it's like that's peter gabriel he leaves the band the drummer phil collins steps up and has a similar voice to peter gabriel how does that happen and they they don't miss a beat no pun intended yeah. but um <laughs> sorry <Yeah. laughs> and you know if you yeah. listen to if you listen to um uh, Adam Ant, and you hear the Ad Adam Ant's right later, or some of his records, or one of his big records, was produced by Phil Collins. And then you hear what sounds like Phil Collins, what sounds like Peter Gabriel in the background, but it's Phil Collins singing back up for Adam Ant. It all comes together. I'm learning, I'm learning so much tonight from this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Adam Ant was a, you know, for, for like a pop, a, like a punk pop dude, he was a very drum. You know, oh, absolutely. Music is super drum driven. Uh, yeah. why I like An it. Arm, army of drums. Me, have you had the opportunity to meet Getty, Alex, or Neil? Uh, I, I obviously worked with Neil, but any of you guys? I met I Getty. never. 
Yeah, last last year I I met Getty at um, Cosmo Fest, which is this little uh, the year before that, 2019, and it's this uh, trade show in Toronto uh, by the <clears throat> put on by this big music store, Cosmo Music, mm -hmm. and um, he was there promoting his book and. Uh, yeah, what a cool guy. I was there giving a, um, a master class, and Simon Phillips was there as well, and um, Omar Hakim. So I was already, I was hanging with those guys, and he, he comes in, and I think it helped. I felt more comfortable because I was hanging with those guys. So <laughs> meeting Daddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and... Um, all of a sudden, Dave Grohl walks in, which was like a total shock. Is he ha just happened to be there hanging out with Getty? It was a really weird thing. <laughs> well, he was a fanboy. Yeah, you know, he ended yeah, up. Yeah, like he was uh, just kind of shadowing Getty for mm -hmm. <laughs> for some project <laughs> they were with. I I haven't met Dave Grohl, but every I hear so many people say what a nice guy he is that I'm suspicious. He's awesome. He's, yeah, he's very, 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 just, very nice. Just yeah, like okay. he comes across. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah. It's not just an act. Yeah. It's, not a Get Bill, it's not a Bill Cosby. <laughs> I was like, scared, like, you know. Um, but uh, Getty was super cool. Um, yeah, and I'd love, I never, I've never got to meet Neil, sadly. I'd love to meet yeah. Alex. I uh, hope, yeah. hope to meet him at some point. I have a guitar just like his up, right up there. <laughs> um, the, you know, there's four hours of, um, talks about Neil. I, I talk about Neil, but, you know, a lot of other, like, you know, people who, you know, other drummers talk about him in, in the four-hour Modern Drummer special about Neil Peart. So I really hope everyone uh, buys that. If you haven't bought it already, um, Modern Dr it's at uh, moderndrummer.com slash shop. So please um, get the special and the, the profits for it go to support um, research into the cancer that, that took him away from us. So uh please please do check that out um uh by the way we we have uh, 10 to 15 minutes and then we're going to go watch adventures of power on the stream or if anyone wants to watch it on amazon prime for like full screen view they can do it there um all of the streams support music cares so uh and that doesn't just mean tonight i mean forever uh we're giving money the the earnings to music cares so uh, check out Adventures of Power. I would love to talk about the fact that I'm now waiting for my coffee beans to come from Charlie Benante, <laughs> now become a coffee entrepreneur. And uh, uh, let's talk uh, about this, Charlie. It, you know, as a drummer who has to drum fast, is that how you got into coffee? Because you didn't want to be into speed? No, nah, no. Nah, well, it's partially kind of like that, but I grew up in like an Italian, you know, family household whatever and coffee was always brewing so either it was you know cappuccino regular coffee or black coffee whatever you know um and i've always been addicted to it um and then about 15 years ago dave mustaine hit me up and said i'm thinking about thinking about doing the coffee thing are you down to do it and i'm like absolutely i know exactly the type i want to do the brew the blend whatever and we started doing it and then kind of lost interest in it, but I kept going. So I did it independently on my own. And then uh, this uh, coffee brew here, Dark Matter in Chicago, I hooked up with them and then we started doing uh, three blends and it's been great. It's just, uh, it's the blends that I, I picked. I went down there, we did the taste test, spitting it out, and blah, you know, but uh, I love it. It's like my favorite thing. You spent any time in Italy? In the oh, old yeah. Country? Yeah. Do you, do you like walk, walk across the plaza holding a tiny little espresso cup going, hey, hey it's, it's good to try, try. I, uh, I wear like my jacket half on and I just walk around the town just sipping. Yeah. You know, we you know, uh, there we go. But uh, I, I, I love Italy and I still have family there too. Um, but uh, it's Where the greatest thing. Uh, up in like uh, the north part of Italy and then my dad is uh, Sicilian um so we never we never played there <laughs> you haven't 
No, I'm, we only, we've only we've only played not Sicily. Played Italy. Not Sicily. Not we played Italy, of course, but we don't. We 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 play like Milano. We play. Uh, we played um, up yeah. up north. We played Rome, of course. Um, uh, a couple of other places too. Like festivals are usually out. You uh-huh. know. Yeah. yeah, they're way out. Usually. Yeah. yeah. My film my was favorite supposed places. to play. My film was supposed to play in Sicily, but um, that it we have a coronavirus situation, so I I was not able to go. I was in Ischia, Italy, with a film, but uh, not not yet in Sicily. Um, but um, yeah, I really want to go to Sicily. I I hear it's like another planet. I bet it is. <laughs> um, so, Alex, you want to talk a little bit about your podcast that you got going, or sure, anything sure. that you want to uh, share with people who might not know about it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I've wanted, I've been planning to do one for a long time. I know, you know, everybody and their pet now has a podcast, but I, it was, it's been in the works forever, and one of the shining lights of the whole shutdown and just not traveling in addition to cooking up with these guys and doing our songs has been uh, having the time and energy to get my podcast together. And Mm -hmm. it's called moods and modes. And um, every episode is different. Uh, The original idea was one-on-one sessions with with different musicians. So I started it out with uh, an, great uh, Indian musician who, who's a friend of mine, Prasanna, great guitar player. Uh, Nir Felder, who's a guy, he's, he, he plays for um, Ben Platt, right? You know, that's, he's kind of known for that, but he's also a great jazz player. Sits in with Dave Matthews, you know, great. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now, you know, one-on-one jam sessions are tough to do. So it's sort right. of evolved into uh, stories. So it's almost, it's been described as like this American life for guitar or like an Anthony Bourdain show, but about guitar. (laughs) Did your cat describe it that way or? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, I got some nice reviews, which, and I was like, oh, that's the perfect description. Yeah, yeah, no, that is good. um, So it got, and it got picked up by the, the Osiris Media Network. Okay. And they have uh, about 200 podcasts. They're like real pros. And oh, nice. Some of the other artists on there are. That's why you have such a good microphone there. Well, yeah. Yeah. I had to step <laughs> it up. <laughs> yeah. They, they, they kind of. Ra and I are like, whoa, we're talking into our laptops. And you got this. Yeah. I'm not even. I'm, I'm talking into my iPad with like my. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh they, they set me straight. Like, you, you need a pop filter. You need, uh, you know, this software, you know. Um, so the, the first few episodes, I mean, there, people said I did really good for, you know, amateur that I am, but it, it's definitely, you'll know, definitely notice. Rocker. Yeah. By, by like episode six or seven, you'll definitely no, notice a difference, but no, it's, and it's all types of music. I, <laughs> I do my own little soundtracks music that does not fit any of my projects. It doesn't fit my jazz guitar stuff. It doesn't fit the metal stuff. I you know, it's, it's a really cool vehicle. Uh-huh. to do stuff so it's called moods and modes and it's available wherever you get your podcasts apple spotify stitcher and so forth that's awesome hey that's alex cool. alex are you are you still doing every friday the live instagram thing yeah well that's that's another thing yeah so on instagram i kind of got in the habit of doing my own version of uh saturday night live but on friday and it's, and it's just <laughs> lo- it's not comedy it. I, it's it's just a I jam session it. but yeah I, Ra's I, always I, there i just go i, I log every, on every, every friday. friday yeah and it's just an instagram live but i use i have a guitar and i i jam a bit and i take questions but I, i'm amazed wine. like people who show up like Ra is usually there uh oh. charlie hunter was just there great musician uh you know, comedians there. My friend Dave Hill was just just popped on. Um, yeah, Phil Phil Demo was there last time. Phil Demo was there. My friend yeah, Mandy Ra- Mandy Ra- Gonzalez from Hamilton was there. Like it's just crazy <laughs> the people that that show up. So that's, that's awesome. every Friday at Alex Golnick on Instagram. <laughs> okay, and Raw Raw who's staying up late because he's in Chile. 
you want to tell us yeah. about your day or were you like on the beach today what's or you're or nah. you, you're, not out of your house. you're not allowed at that house that's why you, you know you know you know what's funny it's like right now i'm in chile in like my parents house which is like the same exact place when i was like 13 or 14 in this exact same room and I would jam to like anthrax and testament. <laughs> and now I'm doing this. Yeah, for real. And now wow. I'm doing this in this room. And it's like it's kind of weird like, or full circle zone. or whatever. But it, yeah. yeah, you know, it's it's <laughs> weird. But I mean I love it. It's great. Yeah. I love hearing that. That's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. Are there any side projects you want to share, Ra? Well, well, we've got a captive. Uh, I yeah. mean, right now I I've been recording some stuff for like basically whoever like hits me up. And with Suicidal, we, we recorded some stuff and everything, but with everything that's going on, I don't even know when it's going to come out, we, you know? Mm -hmm. So at this moment, like, all I'm doing is just basically playing bass at home and recording and mm -hmm. just chilling, I guess, waiting to see what happens. And I, I just, there's, there's I'm trying not to, like... TikTok. There's some, like, girl who's, like, a, a bassist star who always pops up on my feed for some reason. She's, like... Is that blue, bedroom, blue, like, blue the tiger? Or? She's always playing. Well, but there's you, a there's like a bass duet. You could like create a you know wrap <laughs> up a story as like bass extravagant. I've done I've funny. done like out of out of nowhere sometimes like earlier like an hour before logging into this I, I was just in my room and I'm like yeah you know and I go live and play a couple songs and but it's like whenever I feel like and I actually last week I played like a couple like rush songs and stuff and it's cool I I, I like the being a spontaneous i can't do the plan thing and all that it's uh, too much i stress yeah. easily so <laughs> you showed like up on here though so it's good um and charlie you got an art show coming up as well so we uh we're, we're looking at because uh, we postponed it twice already because of the because of the virus so we're looking at hopefully doing it in february maybe around valentine's day so guys mm -hmm. bring your girls <laughs> and girls bring your guys and girls bring your guys yeah or guys bring you should, your guys and, and um, much we're in this world guys bring your guys girls bring your girls and then uh, not the, non, the three of us non-compliant bring your non-compliant as well we should play at the <laughs> art show the three of us <laughs> hey that's a good idea hey. Here we go. yeah we can meet up in chicago and play a couple songs oh, well you know any Hey. Anything you guys do, you tell me. I'm going to put it on the Adventures of Power website because there are, are now band pages for you guys that will always be promotional. I will be on, awesome. on point with what you guys are doing. Um, That's so awesome. um, I think we'll roll to the movie if, unless anyone wants to give any other shout out um, about. Well, one more. I'll ask one more question. When are you guys going to post your next uh, video as a trio, your next song? Any idea? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We took a work, break I for know. the holiday. The holidays came. We kind of lost yeah. track. Okay. Well, well, it's, so. it's, oh, it's, it's going to be a year in, I think, yeah. February or March that, we, that March. we did the first one. And um, two months. Uh, uh, a, a, quick, a quick quick story about that. So the first one that we did, uh, everybody was like writing hey, how did you guys do this? How did you guys do this? And other bands were hitting me up about it. And they're like, how did you guys do this? You know, and I just wrote one of them back. I won't say who it was. And I just wrote talent. And then uh, they never got back to me after that. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you're allowed to say that when you're Benante. You or can, Skolnick. Or, or Rod Diaz. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, um, I, don't I don't really get to say that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah it was, it, we, people were stumped. Because they, they, yeah, now quarantine videos are a thing, but at that yeah. time, people we, were we kind of started it, I guess. We right? kind of did, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely, kind of did. Right? Yeah. That one, the, the YYZ just really blew up, yeah. and I was hearing from people who were hearing from people that didn't know they knew me, it was just being shared, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So many it's people, like, I, I performed an uh, air drummed YYZ in Berlin. And sent the video video to Neil Peart. Uh, this was after I'd made the movie, but I was like touring with it. I played it in Berlin, and I, I and I did YYZ at a at a club. <laughs> like it was, it was an amazing <laughs> video. But anyway, in I Berlin. sent him that, that that was the response that I put in some of the things where he wrote back, 
I was like, is this, are you embarrassed that I did this? And he said, in a word, yeah. In two words, fuck yeah. <laughs> um, because, you know, he knows that air drumming is, air drumming is much harder than drumming. Let's just, you know, I, maybe <laughs> Charlie may not agree because he's a real drummer and I'm an air drummer, but I challenge you the, the athleticness because you have to move like there's nothing to bounce off you don't you, so you have to create the bounce so you're actually double double workout no I, I totally agree with you I'm a really good air basketball player too <laughs> yeah, okay, good. I'm air a great Jordan. air golfer yeah <laughs> uh, um, well so, actually you did you mentioned Neil and of course the anniversary of his his death is coming up soon yeah in two days uh, yeah so yeah, I, I mean, I'll just say again, I, if, if you haven't bought the uh, Modern Drummer special about Neil Peart, it's four hours of amazing music, amazing stories about Neil, interviews with him. Uh, I know I, I included a clip of my some of my interaction with him um, and I don't know, dozens and dozens of amazing drummers and musicians talking about Neil. And if you can get it at moderndrummer.com slash help me uh, slash shop slash shop moderndrummer.com slash shop and the money does go to support uh, cancer research so uh, I hope everyone watching this will get that special and uh, so we'll roll to Adventures of Power which Neil Peart is in and um, anyone who doesn't have time to watch it now or wants to see it big screen you can watch it for free on Amazon um, and we do get money from the free streams and that money goes to support Music Cares so uh, please tell your friends to watch the movie and um it's such an honor to have you guys. It's like a, a little bit like my, you know, teen fantasy to have these three bands on the same screen with me. Um, so um, you guys all rock and everyone watching, you all rock. And I, um, I hope you enjoy Adventures of Power and feel free to air drum along because it'll make you strong enough to fight off any virus and any oh, adversity. So, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, well thank you. I I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Alex. Thanks for having thank us. You, Ari. Thank, thanks, Ra. Thank really, you, Thank you, everybody. It's a really yeah. cool thing. Everybody, be safe. Yeah. Be safe. Be, be safe. smart. Yeah. There you go. We're ready to roll.